You might think that the combination of science and sport together is a relatively new thing, but actually they've gone hand in hand ever since humans first started playing games. To ensure fairness, they would draw a line in the dirt. But to improve things and ensure continuity year on year, they cut two grooves in a marble sill. You would stand on the sill and put your toes in the groove before you started. Hence the saying, towing the line. It's one of the earliest examples of sports technology and something you can still see today at Olympia in Greece. Fast forward through history and we crash into the Industrial Revolution. And for the first time, the average worker had a little bit of disposable income, but there were huge numbers of them. And thanks to the new labour laws, they also had the Saturday afternoon off. So what to do with that time? And the answer lies here in Sheffield's Kellam Island Industrial Museum and on the fantastic shelves over there. So 19th century Sheffield was a huge manufacturer of cutlery, of hand tools and of cannon shells. So at lunchtime on a Saturday afternoon, the whistle would go and the workers would clock out using the clocking machines over there. They would then go down the pub for a couple of hours and then pass through those turnstiles there into the football matches. And that's why traditionally football starts at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. The story is all there on these shelves. I give them feedback that helps them achieve their goals. And that's the goals for that session, the goals for that training cycle, and ultimately the goals that will get them towards elite performance and hopefully an Olympic medal. So we've got the video of Ben. This is the high-speed video linked to the force plate data, and we can play the video through. Oh, wow, I love that. You can see the line projected on screen, and if the line's longer, he's pushing harder. And depending on what direction the line goes, that's the direction he's pushing into the tower. So here, for example, you see he's pushing back quite hard. Drivers for this technology have obviously been kind of um, interaction with computers, gesture recognition, the sort of thing that kind of normally happens in a living room. With sports engineering, we can model a whole sport and we can use it to push the physical boundaries of the discipline. Is it cheating? 